Welcome to our Chalk Talk Today uh, street side edition. Um, if a car comes, I'm probably going to have to move, but um, we'll just see how it goes. So um, I'm going to give you a general overview of the parts of different kinds of um, specialized stems. Uh, this one in particular is called a tunicate bulb. And in a tunicate bulb, you have papery scales on the outside covering of fleshy scales, uh, a basal plate here, which this is your little stem portion. These are all technically leaf tissue. You've got your leaf up here, and then you'll have, um, you know, an area where they're all coming out from the center. And then you have little roots that form here at the bottom. Uh, a good example of a tunicate bulb that we're going to propagate. Um, there's a couple. Uh, we'll do shallots and onions, and then we will also do um, daffodils. Daffodils are an example of a tunicate bulb. Our next example is an imbricate bulb. An imbricate bulb is very much like a tunicate bulb, but it doesn't have the papery covering on the outside. It just has fleshy scales that are concentrically arranged. Uh, they still come out of a basal plate down here, and then you still have roots. Uh, a good example of an imbricate bulb is going to be uh, an Asiatic lily or an Easter lily. And uh, we're going to do something called scaling with imbricate bulbs uh, in our exercises this week. When you're planting an imbricate bulb scale, you, this is about your soil line. So you want to have about half of your scale or a third of your scale underneath the soil line and the rest above your soil line. We're going to do scaling for two different plants, uh, one being garlic, which is a tunicate bulb, it has a papery covering, and the other being the stargazer lily, uh, which does not have a papery covering. This is an example of what we're going to do with the daffodil. This is called scoring, and scoring, you take this um, bulb and you flip it upside down, and you cut um, a notch in this basal plate. So a lot of times commercially they'll do six. Uh, for our intents and purposes, we're going to do four. This is a corm. So a corm is pretty similar, but instead of having um, these fleshy pieces that peel apart, this is all one solid unit down here. Uh, and then there are little eyes that the, that the leaves come off of. So And it has a much larger basal plate that encompasses more of the center of that starchy area. Um, down here is where there would have been an old corm, and the new corms form on top of those old corms. They kind of look like hats, so uh, one of the exercises that we're going to do is we're going to peel off those hats. This is an example of stolons. So stolons are an underground stem that goes um, laterally that forms roots at each of their nodes, and then it also forms a shoot at each of those nodes. So uh, this is really common for like mints and uh, a lot of grasses do this. And the way that we propagate these is we just cut apart sections of those so that you have a little bit of shoot and a little bit of root, and then we wrap them around in a pot. The one that we're gonna do this week is chocolate mint. So here's our soil line, here's our stem that goes underneath the soil line, and each one of those has roots that are coming out of the nodes. Okay, next we have tubers. So you guys are familiar with tubers for potatoes, and they have these, it's a big swollen modified stem, and they have these little areas uh, where you can form both roots or shoots. Um, a lot of times they call these eyes, and what we're going to do is we're going to take three different sizes of tissue with an eye and we're going to see how much tissue you need to be able to make that eye successfully grow if you only need a little bit of tissue or you need a lot of tissue. And then lastly we're going to look at rhizomes. So a rhizome is a horizontal stem, again like a stolon, but stolons aren't fleshy. Uh, this is very, very fleshy and at each one of these nodes it forms a whole new plant. This is really common in irises and canna lilies and ginger. Um, so if, if they get too compact, they'll stop flowering for you. So that's why we need to divide those on a fairly regular basis. With canna lilies, we divide them every other year. Um, with irises, you can go three or four years. Uh, ginger, you're going to want to eat your ginger at some point anyway. So you might as well just dig it up every year and then cut it and save your pieces for eating and your pieces for planting.